Approach control to Sky Tripper 190. You're clear to land runway 28 left. Surface wind 160, speed 10 knots. Sky Tripper 190 established ILS for Autoland. Repeat Autoland. What the? Approach control to Sky Tripper 190. Visibility is good. Do you have an emergency? Sky Tripper 190, switching to Autoland now. Hello, Sky Tripper 190. Repeat, do you have an emergency? Unidentified traffic, right to left, range one mile. Approach control to Sky Tripper. Unidentified traffic, right to left, range one mile. Do you have it in sight? Repeat, do you have it in sight? Oh, the stupid. Can you clear traffic crossing ahead of my landing? You've been drinking, George. Do it, just do it. That's all. Tower to Sky Tripper 190. Clear the runway and proceed to the passenger bay. What's he waiting for now? Hold all flights on runway 28. Security. Well, I just don't get it. 124 passengers they were. Well, the crew must be up front. You think so? What's this? Sky Tripper 190 established ILS for Autoland. Repeat Autoland. Sky Tripper 190 switching to. Come on, let's get security. and speed of a panther. His hand held hard and flat, flicked out like a knife, catching Lorenzo behind the ear. Without a sound, the huge man crumpled slowly to the floor. 
the grotesque body making a dull, sickly noise, which oozed rather than echoed in the perfumed air. Cain gazed at the body for a long moment, then lifted his eyes slowly towards Laura, waiting breathlessly at the door. His mouth firm, lips slightly parted as he approached her, gripping her shoulder so hard that her eyes widened in shock and pain, exquisite pain. You picked the wrong side, Laura, he said. Did I? She answered softly, moving smoothly into his arms, her perfume filling his mouth, his nostrils, his body, her body. Busy. Aren't we all? I'm terribly sorry. You just walked in. It's all right, Miss Sims. It isn't the enemy yet. You better type out the notes we've got, and we'll finish it off tomorrow. Oh, I don't mind working tonight. I'm simply dying to know what happens. What a charming thought. Jason, I'm afraid I'll have to satisfy you. your curiosity in the morning. Good night, Mr. King. Goodbye, Miss Sims. Writing can be fun. She does 180 words a minute, among other things, no doubt. What problem dominates your pristine thoughts today? What do you make of these? It's an aeroplane, modern and empty. That's how it landed. No passengers, no crew, and no explanation. What will they think of next? Or not they. We. Oh, no, 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 Stuart. I'm in the middle of my new marquee, and the publisher wants the first draft by Thursday. Oh, well, listen, tell him to wait, can't you? How do you lose 130-odd passengers and crew at a height of 33,000 feet and still bring a plane into a landing approach? Do you want an answer immediately, or can I go into meditation? Ideas will do, Jason. Now, any theories you have can't be worse than the empty files we've got. Hmm. The route was checked? The flight was on schedule, so there was no time for detour. Not a soul on board. Well, just a preset tape recorder requesting automatic landing procedure. The solution's quite simple. There's another aircraft. Somewhere along the route, another Boeing Sky Tripper took its place, came in for the final approach, with the pilot bailing out over open country. Why? Kidnapping, mass kidnapping. The passengers were spirited away to another airfield, each individual tagged and valued so that ransom notes could be sent off to their dear and loved ones. And they just happened to have an identical aircraft lying around with all the correct luggage on board? You didn't mention luggage. I'm mentioning it now. Now, it was the same plane that left New York. And in the four days since it's happened, there have been no ransom notes, no trace of the passengers, and no suggestion of motive. Mass defection to the east is the only answer. Check your embassies. You'll find one of them bulging with boffins and frustrated school teachers. Jason, we want workable ideas. Exactly. Well, thanks very much for your help. I'll be back at the office doing it the hard way. Good. And Stuart, when you find my idea works, postcard will do. Je voudrais téléphone à Londres. Oh, Miss Sims, I wonder if you place a call to London, Heathrow Airport. Annabelle. Just a second. Andy got indigestion again? No, amnesia. She probably feels we're working her too hard. How's it going, anyway? Very slowly. If only I had more data. Yeah, like who took it and why? The pilot's log or the black box would do very nicely, thank you. So far, I've fed in every fact we know about the aircraft's movements, including flight schedules, radio positions, ETAs, uh, navigation. And? It all checks. According to Auntie, the plane flew direct from New York to Heathrow and couldn't possibly have made a detour. Which we both know is absolutely wrong. So does Auntie. That's why she keeps blowing fuses. There is a possibility that they were jettisoned. That's a terrible thought. Well, it would have been signs of a struggle. Everything suggests complete cooperation. What did Andy say? Orderly disembarkation. That's when she blew the overload, sir. 
you gain an audience with the mastermind. Yeah. As a matter of fact, he came up with the solution right away. Mass defection, plan in advance, with the complete cooperation of some Eastern embassy. What did they use? A time machine? Uh, somewhere along the line, there's a fake set of figures. It's probably staring us right in the face, the key to everything. Well, I'm analyzing everything. Yeah. Listen, just in case, check out that passenger list for political types. They might have been one or two aboard. You don't seriously think Jason's right? No, but he has a very nasty habit of scoring near misses. He has a very nasty habit of making wild generalizations which cover just about anything. Just the same. Give it a rundown, huh? Where will you be? London. I'm going to go over that plane with a lie detector. If you need any help, call Jason. Auntie would probably have a heart attack on the spot. Butcher, baker, detergent maker. Well, there doesn't need to be much here. Here's the flight plan for that day. Everything tallies. George, how difficult is it to put a Boeing into Autoland approach? Oh, pretty straightforward. Flight path runs more than 50 miles, so a gradual descent would do. Shove her into autopilot, reduce power, and there you are. Mind you, it would have been pretty dicey if we hadn't cleared the runway. Yes, that's what bothers me. Somebody's gone through an awful lot of trouble to land an empty plane. They wouldn't rely just on a tape recorder. Mark Kane was involved in the hijacking of a yacht. The villains hid in an air vent, came out at night, pitched the passengers overboard. But this wasn't a yacht, and the air vent of a Boeing Sky Tripper can only take people six inches tall. <laughs> what a marvelous idea, the ultimate in miniaturization, tiny kidnappers. No, not midgets. These big jets have a, a kind of a corridor, a service, a tunnel between the passenger floor and the freight hold, don't they? That's right. There's one right down the center of Boeing. Amalgamated press thought you might like to see these. Thank you. Reload that, please. Mm -hmm. When were these taken? The 29th of April. The day before the aircraft took off? Yes, by the resident stills men from the PR office. No, nothing. It might be easy if we knew what we were looking for. Return them with our thanks. Yes, of course. Jean, when was this one taken? Number seven. Uh, the 30th of April. It's the aircraft, the Boeing. Do you recognize anyone there? No. The man in the background turning away. Can't be certain, but it looks like Ralph Voss. Voss Industries, you must have heard of him. Well, of course I have, but I don't think I've ever seen him. It's hardly surprising. He's practically a recluse. He hates publicity. Hides in his estates, not only by name. Ralph Voss. If he had been on the plane, it could be part of the reason. Voss was on that plane. This is the biggest case we've ever had.
All right, come on out. Morning. Uh, fascinating jobs, these Boeings. I could spend many a happy hour down there. All those little gadgets. What do you think you're doing? Solving part of the mystery. That's where the pilot hid, after he put her down safely. When they parked her in the hangar, he popped off for parts unknown. Listen, the next time you decide to take up a case, let me know, will you? I mean, there's no point in both of us chasing the same answers. Well, you didn't exactly fall about with enthusiasm over my theory. Well, you seem to have given it up yourself. What's a pilot got to do with a mass defection job? Oh, it's early days yet. What's your next step? Trace the man who hid in there. Oh. You don't think that's important? No, no, no. It's something to do, I suppose. I have a different approach. No doubt we'll bump into each other sooner or later. Sorry to disturb you. You obviously thought the matter urgent. Are you quite sure about this? The photograph makes it more than possible, if not conclusive. Does Sullivan know? Not from me. Ralph Voss. His companies are building munitions and aircraft for just about every country in the Western world, and that's only one part of his complex. Is our department still on the case? Yes. As you said, this is not conclusive proof, but your investigation will be kept under constant review from now on. Where is Sullivan now? In London. Then I would suggest you join him and give him those facts personally. If Voss is involved, I don't want his name mentioned in any cable or telephonic communications. If there's going to be a crisis over this, at least it can come at a time of our choosing. Good night, Miss Hurst. Good night, sir. Miss Kilperton. Mr. Grant from Air Traffic said you had some questions. Dear George. Ground hostess. Grade one. Do you occasionally fly? <laughs> Only after the fifth martini. Large martini, bone dry. How can I help you, Mr. King? Jason. Jason. Officially? Yes. In that case, it's about an empty Boeing Sky Tripper. Shouldn't you ask Mark King? I understand. A reader, I'm flattered. You were assigned to meet the flight. Yes, but I couldn't tell you anything about it. I think you can. Let's begin with the name of the VIP on board, shall we? Oh, you don't have to buy me a large martini for that. You must have seen the passenger list. Yes, I have. And they don't assign grade one bunnies. Oh, thank unless you. there's somebody very special on board. There was nobody on that list. So the obvious answer is incognito. You could only find that out from our New York office. A routine check was made. They didn't have anything. Who were you supposed to meet? Three people. Without names? James Walters. James Walters. A nom de plume? Probably. And you've no idea who it might... Wasn't there a rumor? Even if he was wrong, you must have heard a name. Well, it was only a rumor. Yes? Ralph Boss. You're hoping to charter. We can't do anything until tomorrow. Oh, that's a pity. I, I thought you were the people who did a job for a friend of mine last week. Oh, yes. What was his name? Uh, Mark King. Uh, not us. Well, listen, he must have been one of the hangers along this stretch. Maybe you saw him. Oh, maybe. Oh, you'd remember it, all right. It was right after that trouble with that Boeing Skytripper. Oh, yes, the one they found empty. Yeah, that's the one. Well, he came along here, uh, this friend of mine, oh, it must have been early evening, and uh, managed to charter privately. Well, listen, he was a pilot. He might have had his uniform on. Oh, wait a minute. There was someone that night, but he didn't charter. He hopped the lift in one of the company planes, about three hangers down. They'd been warming it up all afternoon. Which company? 
Bus Industries. Take it easy. What are you doing here? I haven't seen Bertha visit. I might ask you the same question. I'm tracing that pilot, remember? Yeah, I think I found it. The body, where is it? Body? So that's what they were after. Both were anxious undertakers. I wonder why they didn't take you with them. Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. This should tell us something. Captain Thomas Fairlow, pilot. Yes, you did see him, didn't you? I wonder what he was doing here. The man to answer that is Ralph Voss. And Voss himself? We're on his property. Oh, so he wouldn't be mixed up in something like this. Not even if he was a passenger on board that plane. If I'm right, and he was a passenger, he probably had one of his own aircraft standing by to take him the rest of the way. And standing by around here. Well, the mechanic did say a plane was warming up that afternoon. I thought it was for the pilot's getaway. What's that? Oh, it's nothing. I'll check it out tomorrow. Yes, it might be worth it. And you might find out if the plane went anywhere near Ireland. Ireland? Voss Industries. They've got a big plant over there. That's where I'll be tomorrow. Come in. I got your cable saying you were on your way. Made very mysterious reading. It was supposed to. You're not going to believe this, but uh, one of the passengers on that plane might just have been... Ralph Voss? You knew. Intuition. I discovered a photograph of Voss boarding the plane, or someone that looked like him. It set us off on a lead. The Boeing route? Well, yes. It appears that although the aircraft was on scheduled time, it's only half the story. The weather people confirmed a strong following wind for that flight. It should have landed 30 minutes or so early. So they could have touched down in, say, Ireland and still have come in on time. Well, that's right. Anyway, I programmed Auntie. You'll never guess what popped out. Ralph Voss has a factory in Ireland with a private landing field. I only worked all night on this. Anything else you already know? Yeah. Guess who's gone to Ireland to investigate Voss Industries? Jason. And we're going to meet him. Well, we've got to give him this information.
magnificent dexterity, Judah. You must practice an awful lot. Thank you. But you still can't see Mr. Voss. Can I learn to type while I'm waiting? He never sees anyone. Not even you. That's different. Of course it is. That's why I don't intend to budge from your side until he does. And if I have you thrown out? Makes no difference. What's that new French restaurant like around the corner? It's very nice. You're free tonight? I have to work late. Work up an appetite. Julia, will you? Mr. King decided to wait, Mr. Terrell. I thought I made it absolutely clear that I was not... I'm awfully sorry, Mr. King, but I'm afraid you really are wasting your time. Oh, it's mine to waste. I'm easily pleased. Cup of coffee, king-size sandwich or two. Very well. Please come in. I don't think you appreciate the position Mr. Voss holds with the corporation. Last I heard, he was managing director. Mr. Uh, what exactly do you do? I'm his personal assistant. Then you were with him in New York last month? I travel everywhere with Mr. Voss. Now, would you like to tell me exactly why you wish to see him? It's about a man called James Walters. Walters? I don't think I know him. Is he an employee? Yes, you might say that. When do you expect Mr. Voss? Very shortly. He's not away, then? Of course not. This is his office? One of his offices. Now, if you care to leave your telephone number, I'll make you an appointment. The matter is urgent. Well, then I'll try and make it very soon. Next month, perhaps. Good day, Mr. King. Good day, Mr. Terrell. Chalmers, come in. Mr. King is just leaving the building. Don't lose him. Retreat? No, a change of tactics. Advancing in the opposite direction. While assimilating information. I finished at seven. Dinner's at eight. Are you sure you know what you're doing? Don't I always? I don't answer that. Well, I guess I'm ready. How long will you be? Not long, I hope. Now, listen, I'll be here when Jason reports back from his dinner date. We'll have a meeting and see what's up, OK? Stuart, be careful, huh? Promise. Thank you. You know, I'm glad I came. Wasn't just the meal. No. No, I'm getting a little tired of our Mr. Terrell lately. Yes, he struck me as being a bit of a... Um... Is he ambitious? Yes, you could call him that. Do you often work late? Mm, two or three times a week. For Voss? Sometimes. Recently? No, not for a while. Why are you here? I'm afraid I have got an ulterior motive, but I've enjoyed this evening immensely. And what is your ulterior motive? Does the name Walters mean anything to you, James Walters? Yes. Yes, Mr. Voss uses it sometimes when he's traveling and doesn't want to be identified. Why? Who was with him in New York? Well, this last trip? Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Terrell and Howard Finch, the chief accountant. How would you get on with them? Well, things have been a little odd since then. Odd? Well, it's hard to explain. Mr. Terrell's been far more officious since then. He seems to do more. <laughs> he certainly dictates more letters. So you haven't actually seen Ralph Hart? No. Although that's not unusual. Mr. King, telephone for you, sir. Sorry, would you excuse me? This way. Hello, Jason King speaking. Jason Stewart isn't with you, is he? No, why? I was expecting him back ages ago. Well, you probably missed the bus. He went to the Voss Industries airfield to check the runway for tire marks or something. Well, it's an awfully long runway. All right, Adam, but I'll be on my way back. Wait, where's the young lady who was dining with me? I beg your pardon, sir. The young lady who was here. The lady and gentleman who at this table left a few minutes ago, sir. I hope they left you a good tip.
I wish all the nice girls wore pajamas. And gentlemen knock. Do they? I think you'll find this operation is a bit bigger than we thought. Bigger than mass defection? You forgot your hand grenades. I am perfectly capable of finding Stuart without hand... All you'll find is that something twice your weight will come out of the darkness at you feet first. If they've got Stuart, they'll be twice as ready for you. That works both ways. For some reason, a lot of people at Voss Enterprises have been persuaded to cover up. The only way we get to Stuart is find out what they're hiding. How? Oh. Get a plane back to Paris. Ask Auntie. Feed her all you've got on Voss Enterprises, Ralph Voss, and what's going on down here. I'm sure she'll come up with some motive. A motive for what? A conspiracy. A conspiracy of silence. Why? Good. Pack up all your armory. I'll buy your nightcap. Mr. Howard Finch, please. Speaking, how is that? I'm sorry to call you so late. My name is King, Jason King. It's important that we meet in the morning. I suggest you telephone my secretary, Mr. King, if you want an appointment. I think this is one you want to make yourself. This is most irregular. What's the nature of your business? Boeing's, Mr. Finch. Empty Boeing Skytrippers. I'm afraid I, I haven't the faintest idea what you are. Shall we say at your office, 9.30, from very well, Mr. King. Half past nine. Is Miss Hurst down there? She checked out a few minutes ago. What's your complaint? Stuart! Welcome to the jailhouse. How did you get here? Mind my own business waiting for Jason when they arrived instead. And as you could hardly object, you allowed them to bring into the hospital. It's not place to hold prisoners. Is it? If you think about it, it's an ideal place for about 130 odd guests. The passengers? Locked. The place has never been so crowded. They can't hold them here indefinitely, surely. Well, that's what's got me beat. I saw some of them. They didn't behave like prisoners at all, more like guests. Yes. Well, it's the only explanation. This operating theater is about the only place you could hold anyone. Half the other rooms don't even have doors on. So they don't want to leave? Which means they've been persuaded. Or blackmailed. Or paid. All of them? Well, why not? Ralph Voss is a millionaire a hundred times over. Now, what would you do if he offered you 10,000 to stay lost for a while? Make it 20. Exactly. Except the pilot. Maybe he played truant. So they killed him? Now, that's the part that doesn't add up. Why would Ralph Voss get involved in murder? All the other people already know about this. Somewhere along the line, there's been a double cross. Whatever happened on that plane's been covered up very expensively. And somebody's cashing in. Oh, now you see her, now you don't. I'm sorry. Are you? I'm sure you've got good reason. They are expecting you, Mr. King. And we mustn't keep them in suspense, must we? Mr. King. We're busy people, Mr. King. I'm sure you are. Mr. Hyde Finch, Chief Accountant. Yes, we spoke on the telephone. About Boeing. I gather you both accompanied Ralph Foss to New York last month. You didn't mention that you left on the 30th. On board a Boeing Skytripper? 
No, we didn't. We were supposed to, but at the last minute there was a change of plan. Oh. You can check. We left by charter flight the following day. I had. It's funny how little details get overlooked, like descriptions that don't quite tally. As I said, you left on the 30th as planned. Sometime on the flight from New York, the quite ordinary journey took a tragic turn. One of the passengers died. What was it, a heart attack? I believe that passenger was Ralph Voss. <sighs> this story beats the plots you usually dream up, Mr. King. Possibly. Nevertheless, I believe that your chairman and managing director died on board that plane. If you think about it, and I have, it's the only answer. He used the pseudonym James Walters. The crew were obviously aware of his identity. Perhaps some of the passengers recognized him. You had to make certain they didn't talk? No, 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 you don't understand. Quiet. There's no point now. Let me decide that. You're forgetting yourself, Robert. There were reasons. We couldn't afford to let the news get out. We employ almost 100,000 people in Ireland of Britain, Mr. King. We have a duty to them. For months now, we've been negotiating a massive loan with American and Swiss bankers. The money is essential to support our current expansion. Unfortunately, it's tied to the market value of our shares. The announcement of our chairman's death would have brought heavy selling on every stock market in the world. And now? A few more days and the money will be through. We've already managed to liquidate most of our less profitable subsidiaries. It's all very much as I imagine. The only thing that puzzles me is, why did you return the aircraft? Someone might have seen Voss going on board. <laughs> Press man, aircraft official, someone. Oh, I see. And if the plane had just uh, disappeared? Press would have got to hear of it immediately. Of course. Sending the aircraft back gave us a secondary reason. If someone had seen Voss going on board, well, we could treat it as a kidnapping, demand ransom. What a brilliant idea. It would still have given us the time we need. His personal possessions would have substantiated our story. It's all very irregular, Mr. King, but we've committed no crime. He doesn't know, does he? He really doesn't know. No? No what? Oh, if you mean the passengers. I can assure you they'll all be handsomely compensated. We already have their full agreement on this. You're a fool, Mr. Finch. A gullible fool. I'm quite prepared to justify my actions in court. On a charge of murder? Don't be ridiculous. Captain Thomas Farlow is dead. What did he do? Make the mistake of trying to reach London? Robert, tell him it's nonsense. The captain's with the others at the hospital. He's been dead since Friday. Why? Why, Robert, it was so simple. You are a fool, aren't you, Finch? Who do you think's been doing all the work around here, not Rolf Voss, me? He built an empire, but I've been running it for years. Including the checkbook. Miss Howarth, I want the head of security in here immediately. Yes, sir. I want him arrested now. It won't do you any good, Finch. Not the way you've been turning corporation assets into cash. To get us out of this mess. How much? What was that? How much was in the kitty? 20 million. And the loan? 40 million, convertible bonds. We have been greedy, haven't we? Greedy? Will someone explain? Motive, Mr. Finch. Usually my problem. I think you'll find that all the money has been transferred to the most unlikely companies, all controlled by Robert. Mr. Chalmers, place that man under arrest. Naughty Robert. Well done, Mr. Finch. That's far enough. Chalmers, what the...? You couldn't work it out, could you, Finch? How do you think I kept the passengers under cover? Who do you think stopped the rumours? Who put the hospital into quarantine? Murder the pilot. You gain nothing by this. Wrong again, Finch. I gain it all. You can't hide 60 million pounds or the passengers. Can't I? Miss Howarth, go to dispatch. I'll, uh, I'll meet you there. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes. The face isn't quite right, but we can fix that. What are you planning now, Terrell? Something quite simple. It's time the sea gave up its dead. You, Voss, the pilot, everyone. Mr. King can take my place. You didn't really expect me to let them go, did you? Not when it's so easy to get rid of everyone who knows anything at all.
Well, I can't say I should be sorry to be back. And me. Can't complain, though. 25,000 tax-free can go a long way. There's no sense in wasting time. How long before we're over the Atlantic? 15 minutes. You're sure it's going to work? By the time the bodies are found, nobody will know how long they've been in the sea. Or how they got there. Attention. Attention, please. This is your captain speaking. In approximately 30 minutes' time, we will be arriving at London Airport. All your relatives and friends have been informed and will be at the airport to meet you. Checks for the amount agreed with you will be presented by our representative at London Airport. On behalf of Voss Industries, I would like to thank you sincerely for your assistance during this trying period. He's a monster. Yes, he has his moments. Well, the passengers won't be fooled much longer. And even Terrell can't persuade them to step out of 10,000 feet. Well, it wouldn't be difficult to arrange. And how would your diabolical mind work it out, Jason? I'm just getting some fresh air. Gas. Get the mask on. You can't do this. It's monstrous. Oh! It's better than anything you can offer, so shut up. Suit yourself, Sullivan, but personally, I'd prefer the gas. Sit down, Stuart. Take a few minutes. Shoot anyone who tries to get through. It's hot in here, which means condensation. Pressurization. Don't wait. We'll open the doors. All right, let's go. Gas should have cleared by now. Where's Jackson? I told him to stay here. Find it. We'll use this door.
and you're not Mark Kane. You can't possibly try to land. Well, we can't stay up here indefinitely. We haven't got enough fuel to start with. Do you have any idea how to land this thing? None. Absolutely none at all. It's ridiculous. Calling London Control. Calling London Control. London Control. Identify yourself, please. This is Jason King speaking. J for Juliet, A for Alpha, S for Sierra, O for... Well, whoever you are, you're making a mess of our flight planning. Well, then perhaps someone else ought to take over. I've established ILS. I'm switching to Autoland now. You knew about that all the time. Yes, of course I did. Everything's automated these days. Nearly everything. Excuse me. <laughs> 